This is The Hot Zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. I just talked to a, a Washington Examiner reporter about this uh, last night, and she was saying, how do these people afford to pay $3,500, $4,000, $6,000 to come up? I mean, most Americans couldn't come up with that much cash if they had to. And in my experience, it's been two different things that, that caused that. One of them is families get together, they pool all their resources, and I'm talking about aunts, uncles, cousins, everybody, because they know if they can start this chain of migration and get one person into the States, that person will eventually be able to make money and send it down and bring more and more of them up. The other way is more what I would call human trafficking. It's the the uh, indentured servitude, right? So talk about that a little bit. Absolutely. You're, you're right on target, and that's exactly right. And I that question I, I would ask myself and I would ask these individuals for the last 20 years that I've been in law enforcement, how did you get this money? Sometimes it wasn't three or $4,000. Sometimes, you know, it was Chinese nationals that paid fifty, sixty thousand dollars and uh, And so you're right. You're absolutely right. There's family on both sides of the border from the U.S. and from Central America gathering those funds to get that person over. The other one is that indentured servitude where and it's happening more now where the cartels say, OK, you already paid the three thousand or four thousand to get you, but that's not going to be enough. Now we're going to send you with drugs methamphetamine and fentanyl and heroin and you're going to better cross that as another addition as part of the smuggling adventure or, or when you get, get to chicago you still owe us five grand and you will continue to owe us and you will pay us that five grand from over there how uh you're going to be working with a local gang that the cart the sinaloa cartel or the gulf cartel or the cartel jalisco new generation works with over there and you will uh, uh do what we ask you to do and uh, i got a question asked just the other day um, well, how, how do the cartels uh, control that or threaten that to get their done, get that done? <laughs> you have to understand the cartels are vicious. You just have to go online and see some of these videos that these guys post. They will burn you alive. They will they will cut you off your head in front of your family members if you don't do anything. That intimidation has already been proven. And that, that all you need to do is order you to do it. And that's the, the big issue. And so that right there is a big problem. That's where the kids come in. And that's where a lot of the females also come in to be served. And, and they pay back by, you know, uh, the, the sex slave trade and having service. You know, I've seen the, in my cases, the 30 to 40 men a night. Uh, and so uh, it, it's a horrific crime. Uh, and it leads back primarily back to the cartels because these guys are controlling by Mexico's own standard, uh, uh, own statistics, 80% of the country. I think they control all of Mexico now, not just the po politicians, the police, uh, a lot of the media, they really have uh, ultimate control. And uh, I just can't believe that our, our administration, our government can recognize the impact that it's having in our, in our country, even though you see a lot of that stuff happening in Mexico. Well, the ultimate uh, you know, goal for them is to do it here in the US. And these people that are coming in right now are not being vetted. We're not having the, the resources because of the, the amount of, of people coming at once. Some are getting DNA tested. Some are not getting background cases, uh, uh, checking their backgrounds. Some they're getting their fingerprints on as much as they can. We're getting seven, 16, 17 year olds that are uh, been brought in by the cartels, by the way. Listen, you're 16, 17. They work for the cartel, uh, Golfo. You're going to go and work for us over there. You're on an accompanied minor. You're going to get in. So uh, go in there and you're going to work for us. You're going to send back the money. And so uh, uh, that's the part that... A 16, 17 year old is a grown man. I mean, you know, they oh, yeah. people have no problem using a 14, 15, 16, 17 year old as a, as a foot soldier for them. And, and we see that every, all kinds of stuff. They come in and they send them up and sit on top of a mountain somewhere in Arizona yep. or California or something and watch for the border patrol radio back and let the cartel know where they are. Uh, they're, they're definitely working against us, but uh, you know, aside from the human tragedy, aside from the human uh, factor that's involved here. Um, I just came from the border between Colombia and Panama, as I said, and one of the things that I discovered on this last trip was that because these migrants, I mean, those borders are, are technically closed, 
The border between Panama and Colombia is closed. The border between Panama and Costa Rica is closed. If I try to go between Panama and Costa Rica, they're not going to let me through. But they are letting these migrants through because they've built up so many of them that they've got to do something. Panama is a small country and Colombia doesn't want any more of them. They've got two million Venezuelans alone in there. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are giving preferential treatment to these migrants and allowing them to go through. I had one uh, official from the Colombian uh, border police who told me at a restaurant one night, she had checked my passport when I got to Capagana. And, and so I saw her and I recognized her and I said, you check my passport. And, she, and so we started talking and I said, what do you do when all these migrants come? Because a lot of them don't even have passports. And she said, they tell us just to go away, just look the other way, do something else for a couple hours and let them go through. So those people are getting preferential treatment. They're not getting checked at all at the border and the cartels know that. And what I found is that they are salting in among those migrants young men with big heavy backpacks full of cocaine and they're mm -hmm. walking it north into into panama and it's just one more way that they're infiltrating that record amount we're seeing record amounts of cocaine now coming out of mm -hmm. coca out, out of colombia we've never seen as much as we're seeing now even back in the 80s and so um talk about the other things that could come in along with this human flow uh, the the things that worry the u.s government the most uh, for me, it's the uh, the link to terrorism and the the the, the that special interest alien that is not going to come to this country for a job or or to reunite with his family member, but is to cause us harm, and and that's where I see uh, border security as a national security issue, uh, because uh, the cartels are one thing, and they they're definitely a national security issue as well. Um, but it's those individuals uh, that are coming with those different intentions, uh, either either as a 16, 17 year old to, as an accompanied minor. But in, in a year or two and they, they turn 18, what are, what are they going to do? Are we going to go and find them and deport them? Uh, are, are they going to be are we going to try to integrate this individual from Syria in a high school? in Atlanta. I mean, it, it almost makes no sense because there's no sustainability. There's no plan uh, with all these individuals uh, as they uh, as we try to absorb them into our communities. And that's what's happening already at the border. The border, they can't absorb them anymore. So there's there's 1500 in Dallas right now. There's so many in Houston. They just opened up the uh, uh, the convention center in San Diego. I just heard President Biden today say that 5000 in Fort Bliss in, in El Paso, they're going to be a facility of 5,000. That's not that's not the answer that I was looking for. Uh, building more facilities to house more migrants and more unaccompanied minors, that's not the solution. The solution is secure the border because if we're not able to vet the people that are coming in here, and and, and then I'll tell you this uh, from the upfront, I'm very for pro-legal Im legal immigration. I'm for that. Uh, and I know that system needs work as well. But uh, uh, the, the way we're doing it right now is not the right way. The individuals you just described that are coming from these countries, and by the way, they are coming from all these other countries. A lot of people think it's just Mexico and Central America. No, they're coming from all parts of the world. Uh, and yes, they, they are already coming with uh, the connections to the, 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 the Colombian drug cartels, of course, the Mexican ones, uh, to bring the drugs. There was a big seizure uh, of about 81 bodies uh, in, in Texas a, a few weeks ago, and they, they caught them, and they had 200 pounds of meth amongst them. You know, I never used to see that. I never used to see the drugs commingled with the human smuggling. Yeah, they, used separate, right? they, used to, they used to separate it, but not anymore. This is where the, the cartel said, wait a minute, wait a minute. These humans, are, they pay pretty well. And so uh, they took over, and they've taken over. And not, not only are they exploiting them, to get across, they're saying, you're gonna take our product uh, across. And we've seen the record number of seizures. You're absolutely correct, right on the money, the cocaine. There was a huge seizure in uh, Chihuahua State just this, a few days ago, um, a one uh, 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 like a week ago of uh, over about 900 pounds was one of them, 800 pounds was the other one, and about a three, 400 kilos of cocaine. Uh, it still continues to happen. And and, and this poison continues to, to come into the country now. The Mexican cartels are the number one producers of the fentanyl and, and the methamphetamine in the pills, especially the counterfeit pills, which we've seen a record number of, of, of our kids and children that are not, not necessarily drug addicts. They're experimenting with Adderall or they want to take a Percocet here or there, and it's full of fentanyl. 
because these pills are the way they're made. You know, the pill mills and these pill machines, they're not separating the fentanyl equally within each pill. You'll get one that kills 100 people. It'll kill you instantly. And so um, there's a big crisis with that as well, aside from the 80,000 do- overdoses that we had last year in our country. Um, so it's, it's a big, broad picture of how important border security is. Uh, trade, you know, uh, how much of the illegal trade comes in there. Another thing that a lot of people don't think about, and HSI does this, is counterproliferation of investigations and uh, intellectual property rights uh, uh, violations like uh, fake ma- masks, uh, fake vaccines now that all of a sudden you start seeing uh, being seized at the border. They're not the, the approved ones that, that you're waiting for to take against the virus. And, and so uh, that's another thing that we got to look out for because uh, we have China who is working with the cartels, providing them with all the precursors and all the chemicals to make these, these drugs and, and this counterfeit drugs that they want to bring into our country. And it's all going to do is harm us. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2021.